Hello YouTubers, I uh, want to give you a little update on the uh, <clears throat> 12 inch Bulldog <coughs> rocket fireplace. <laughs> I don't think the rocket stove is appropriate anymore. I'm going to call it the rocket fireplace. This is closer to a fireplace than it is a rocket stove. <clears throat> I want to give you a good shot of this. I'm going to be handing the camera off. But we got the uh, Got the cob set, got the curly cues on there how we wanted it. There's our barrel, we call it the bulldog because it's short and squatty and powerful. Show you the top here. There's a tile on top. Of course we put tile around the back side, right around the barrel there as well. <coughs> now this thing is nowhere near dry. Let me go ahead and get you a shot at the thermal siphon system. So, as you guys know, there's a, a coil there, right? And so, let me back out here and get you the right distance. So, we got a drain at the bottom of the barrel, and then the blue is where it's going to go to the coil. And then, it, as it boils in the coil, it will come up and go over to that barrel, and then it will run down and into that barrel, and it'll make that thermal siphon loop. Okay? <clears throat> now, so I'm going to hand it off and I'm going to sit by the stove and explain a few things to you that I've learned here. here you go, Mike. Okay. I'm, I'm curious to how Ian Serrato come up with his math. To have people build a stove in such a manner that requires a downdraft and six inch burn chamber. I'm sure what I'm doing here, or I, I'm, uh, I, I would suspect that what I'm doing here may not be as efficient as what he's doing. Is what he's doing. However, I'll take you outside and show you that even with this kind of fire in there, I don't have any smoke. I can even testify to you, and the owner is the one that's filming this. And he's been side by side with me uh, through the last five or six rocket stoves that we've built, put together. And uh, this configuration, <clears throat> one, you just see it, I mean, you see how pretty it is, and as you can see the, the fire. Uh, but this is nowhere near maximum output of what this stove can do. Just like you guys can pack your little six inch burn chamber, I can stack in here and pack this entire, this entire area, okay? And when that happens, it's one heck of a fire, okay? It's gonna be just, <laughs> right now what you see is what it's holding maybe, you know, uh, it can hold five times that amount of wood, right? And it's just open pool right now. I haven't even put a uh, draft inducer shield over it where it's going to speed the air up over it. I wasn't really expecting it to be this nice medium heat and this kind of pretty little fire. It's just an added extra bonus. So without having the lid on here or the inducer, you can just leave this on in this barrel. Now, these temperatures aren't accurate. The reason these temperatures aren't accurate is because this is one huge chunk of wet clay, okay? And this is even not completely dry up here. So there's a lot of heat that's being robbed right now. This is still drying out. We don't want to build just an intense fire in this thing until uh, it dries out a little bit more. We don't want to crack it or abuse it. And really, I don't want an intense fire because I don't want to damage that. Uh, so uh, just setting here, just so you know what the temperature is with the fire that you've seen in it. Uh, top of this barrel here, I'm running 235, 234. <clears throat> on my flue stack here, I'm running 173. So uh, perfect as far as I'm concerned, right? Because anything less, <clears throat> it wants to backdraft. Now, 
Something that I learned that I think is very important. Okay, I've had these metal tubes in here, now I've got these brick in here. What I think is happening, uh, what I know is happening is it's drafting better. Okay, me and the owner will both testify, <laughs> if need be, that in the side to side comparison, this type of stove built. And this, and Ian Sronto's specifications, and I'm not cutting down Mr. I, I don't know the man, and, I, and, and if he came up with that idea, that's, that's awesome, you know. Uh, we put this fire in here, and this thing, we've been messing around in here for 30, 40 minutes, and it's just we're not having to go up here and check this fire. I, I'm gonna take, I can take you outside, but you can take my word for it today. We got 20, 25 mile an hour wind gusts too, and we ain't got a bit of backflash. It's burning just as slick as it wants to. <clears throat> we also, we haven't introduced outside air here either. We don't even have that open. So, imagine five, six times that amount of wood with the draft inducer speeding the air up over it, plus pumping outside air to it. That's when you're going to, that's when we're going to need the thermal siphon. We're just working on the thermal siphon system now. And we'll, I'll come back when we get it dried out and everything, probably be after the holidays. But when we get it dried out, <clears throat> we're going to come back and we're going to show you what, a, what the Bulldog can do. But uh, anyway, guys, uh, having this like this is easier. Uh, we're being able to put, well, you see the size chunks, and even bigger, and that'll hold up to like 16 inch log there and do that. You just don't have to mess with the fire at all. Uh, all this is warming up, this cob out here, believe it or not, it's just 90 degrees here, laying my hand on it so it's still standing. We, uh, the whole purpose of building this here, I have to show you the purpose of building this here. I just keep it on the stove. Oh, I thought we had a cup. No, you don't have one. Well, I, I'm sorry. But anyway, that was for Mike's coffee cup. <laughs> he, he must have it in the house. But, uh, <clears throat> so uh, a couple other things that this stove has brought to my mind, and that is, you know, that right now, the outside is covered in order where it can't draw air in from the outside air and it's covered out there but i'm sure that heat is coming up through the end of this in this cavity right so i'm not so sure guys that another way to improve a rocket stove is to have a cavity where the heat can circulate to but not have it where the flu runs through the cavity so you don't rob the flu you see what i'm saying if you're robbing that flu, and again, if you're going to get that flu down to those low temperatures when that fire's going out, I mean, you know what? Unless you got a brick riser. Now, I think that I think what's happening is that brick riser is heating up, right? And as it heats up, even when the fire goes out and it gets down to ashes, because the brick riser is still warm, it continues to pull the draw up. Now, it is going to be important to put a, something over the front of this opening when this fire is not burning, when it's completely out, so we don't get that cold draft in here. Right? But I'm telling you, side by side comparison on what is easier, what burns better. Uh, I'm not. I say it looks better. Now, that's a matter of opinion and feelings, but I'm going to say I don't say it looks better. You guys be the judge for yourselves. You've seen the original of what it looked like. <clears throat> we're happy with it um, another thing I want to point out like, well how did you get that cob that looked like that and uh, I learned something else on cob while on this stove and that is when you're mixing your cob you know how to get it to look that how you get it they, I didn't know how people got it maybe I didn't get it to look like what other people got it to look like I just did what I did and got try to get it similar to what I've seen it look how I got that to do that or look like that was, uh, and how I will do it in the future, okay? Latex paint. You can actually mix a little colored latex paint in with your cob on your outside layer, 
I wouldn't do it on the inside layer because I'm not sure how it would affect the structure or integrity. But on that outside layer, when you're trying to smooth that cob in, you can mix a little latex paint right in with it, and it gives that cob a little bit of elasticity. And so that's just a latex flat paint, and then it has a wood stain, and we ragged wood stain on top of it, and I kind of wiped the top of the curlicues off to kind of highlight them. <clears throat> that's all it is, and then we just went over the rest of the bench. Now, you know, we're not we're not using that bench, so to speak. We just didn't want to tear it out, right? We This is from Ian Sorrento's original, you know, we did it, right, what we thought was, that's, you know, two foot bench. This is two foot by two foot, I think. It, it might, it's two foot by two, two foot high, two foot square, with it running down the center. Uh, so we're not we're not really using it, but I think we are. We didn't intend on using it, but I think we are using it. I'm pretty sure the heat's coming down here. Uh, in fact, uh, I can almost prove it here, Mike. Uh, I'll show you. Right here is where the, where the clean out used to be, right? And so I would contend with you that if I shoot a temperature and it's warmer right there, where it's thin and that can come, that heat can come to it, then it'll probably be warmer than this spot right next to it, and that'll prove that heat's coming into that bench. So Mike, right here it's uh, 56.2, and right there it's 57.3. And so it is, to some degree, it is coming in there. And there's insulation there, Mike. There's insulation. So that's just what's bleeding through, probably that much insulation. So the heat is indeed still coming into this bench. We don't know what degree. So if I was going to do this again, you know, I would probably just build this square of it. And I would probably just have the mat in there hollow around it and have an area around it. You know, if this was brick and then brick and then brick all the way around it and had that flat and that was a chamber where that heat could roll in there but still draft it out of here, I think it might be a better situation. So we really don't know, because we're drying out, we really don't know what we're going to do yet on the thermal siphoning and we don't want to be hard on it. But I wanted to give you guys an update, some thoughts on it. Uh, before I took a break for the holidays. So, uh, anyway, thanks for watching. Red button, Mike. <laughs>